Rodman once again working his way towards the sideline. Welcome to Tech Spurts. This is Pirate Media's one first sports rundown of the season. My name is Jackson. I'm a part of WZMB 91.3. I also have a show 12 to 1 on Fridays inside the lines with my co host. I am Anthony and I uh, run the table with my good friend uh, Jackson over here. We do inside the lines 12 noon on Fridays. Don't miss it. Be there, and we are going to recap pretty much what's going on in ECU football sports this week. I'll send it over to the gentleman to my left. So my name's uh, Brendan. Uh, I work for the East Carolina newspaper. I'm the sports editor. Uh, we have papers that come out every Tuesday and Thursday. If you want to go pick those up and uh, read those for yourselves. Uh, and I'm Daniel Shepard. I'm the sports chief for the East Carolina newspaper. So as we mentioned, we're definitely going to give a recap, quick recap of last week's game where ECU traveled to Annapolis, took on Navy. It was a little bit of a blowout. Actually, it was a blowout, 42 to 10. It was not looking pretty, guys. I'll be honest. Uh, Defense kind of slaughtered us. We couldn't do anything with the ball. It just looked out there. And it's one of them tough things where it's tough because – you, you want a service academy to win, but you also want your home team, your school to win. So it's like, who do you pull for? It stink that ECU couldn't pull through, but I think this week will be a little bit better. What all do y'all think we can take away from last week's game, Brendan? Well, personally, I think one of the big things that we, I think you guys can agree with, would be definitely the obvious um, holes on defense on the defensive end of the ball. That well, uh, you know, um, Navy is particularly you know they run that wishbone offense, uh, and we knew what was what we were going to expect going in. We knew uh, from our you know our Mike Houston's previous experience with wishbone offense, he has more experience than anybody on the team with it. So you'd think we would have maybe had a little bit more of a chance than um, other teams, I guess, mm-hmm. to combat that, but. The results of the game speak otherwise, I guess. Yeah, it was not really that pretty at all. Uh, obviously, Jackson highlighted 42-10 to 10 was the final. Um, ECU, we only passed for 138 yards through the air, had no success running the football against them except for the rushing touchdown by Ehlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like you said, obvious holes on the defense. Navy scored four rushing touchdowns and two big receiving touchdowns. So, obvious, a lot of holes on the defense. Things need to be cleaned up coming into this weekend. Yeah, when you have a quarterback, and Malcolm Perry, have 150 yards on the ground and 150 yards through the air, and he don't even pass the ball a whole lot, that says something about your defense breakdown. Oh, yeah, Malcolm Perry definitely had a great game. And uh, so we're going to move this on to this week's game. ECU will be taking on William & Mary at ECU at 6 o'clock. You know, Vegas actually has – ECU favored by 12 points. I think they are undervaluing us as a team. I think we come out better than that. I say we win by three touchdowns. If William and Mary scores 14 points on us, I will be every bit of upset, and I hope that doesn't happen. So, Anthony, what what do you think will happen for this game? I do agree with you uh, on some point. I don't know if it'll be three touchdowns. I think that they'll come out strong. I'm hoping that uh, they win by at least two touchdowns. So I will say ECU gets the W at home against William and Mary uh, with two touchdowns. A couple fun facts coming into this. ECU is 12-4-1 against William and Mary in their history. They have not played since 2001. Back in 2001, ECU 38-23. to Shoo. Mm-hmm. There you have it. Dang, that's a game for you. I think, personally, uh, I have ECU winning uh, 32-21. to Again, I agree with you. I think we are being a little bit undervalued by a spread standpoint. Um, keep in mind, ESPN also thought we were the seven-point underdogs against Navy, and we all know how that one turned yeah. out. So yeah. I think a spread is a good key to keep in mind, but you know, you never know how the game's really going to go, That's I guess, true. until it happens. Uh, one little tidbit of information. Don't sleep on William & Mary. They have a their kick returner they're using right now. His name is Bronze, Branson Yoder, I believe. He averages, for the first three games of the season, he's averaging 40.4 yards per return. Not four, 40. So that's something, if we don't lock that down on special teams defense, we're going to have a big issue on, on Saturday. Yeah, and I have uh, ECU winning by a touchdown. I believe it's going to be a lot closer than what you guys are thinking. Um, William & Mary has a true freshman quarterback, and he's shown through the first three games that he can run the ball and pass the ball. He's got a big arm. And um, until ECU really proves that they can be consistent on offense, I don't, I don't think they're going to score a whole lot of points on Saturday. 
So thank you all for watching. This was the first episode of Tech Experts with Pirate Media 1, our first ever sports rundown of the season. Coach Houston said, this is a home game, but it will not be a home game unless everybody shows out. So we need all students to be there. And thank you all, and I hope you all have a great rest of y'all's day. Go Pirates!